There's two types of people, aren't there, in this world? Go on. The people who put on a jumper when they're cold, and the other type, you just whack their heating up. Which, which are you? I am an unsuccessful heating sticker on oh, oh, no. I'm always cold, but I'm always overruled in my house. So come whatever season, I'm walking around with jumpers, scarves, and sheepskin slippers in my own home. Well, I'm, I'm firmly on your husband's side on this one. I think I was... I got a bit of a reputation with my flatmates at university for being the heating police. <laughs> we had a firm rule, two hours of heating a day, one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening. And I policed that religiously. I bet your flatmates loved you. Yeah, I, I'm, I think a few of them came to, to resent it. It was particularly awkward because the boiler was in one of my flatmates' rooms. Were you marching on in, turning Consta- it off? Constantly knocking on the door. Reese, open up. Heating police. Heating <laughs> police. There's been a report of one hour, five minutes of heating. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Lauren Davidson, the Telegraph's Head of Personal Finance. And I'm Sam Meadows, a personal finance reporter. And this is Moral Money, the show where we draft in the Telegraph's best-known columnists to help you out when you think you're being fleeced. So far on the series, we've discussed children who think their parents are squandering their inheritance... Families considering playing the state school system by buying catchment area property and the moral implications of legally paying less tax. And today, we're sinking our teeth into two more readers' moral money problems and gripes with flatmates, just like mine, are at the heart of the first question. Today's guest is one of The Telegraph's most colourful characters who went from being a self-defined party girl in her 20s to one of the country's leading champions of mental health. She's even managed to recruit Prince Harry to help her and how many people can say that? It is, of course, Bryony Gordon. Bryony, welcome to Moral Money. Thank you for having me. I like that I'm actually, that I'm now sensible enough to be invited onto things like Moral Money podcast because you would not have been picking me out of the Telegraph office <laughs> and asking me this 10 years ago. It's not very serious, I'm afraid. We're not going to be talking about ICES and investments. No, well, good, because you still wouldn't. <laughs> but what I mean is is that they would be like, no, don't, don't get her off. Now you're an adult. I was like borrowing money. Oh, my God, yes. I'm an adult. Did you see that thing in the paper today? People become adults at 26. Oh, really? And there was a kind of like a, a list of things like being able to put up a tent and having, you know, and, and, and not having debt and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, I still don't feel like an adult. I think I think as I've got older, I've just got more debt. And, and more childish almost. I mean, take yourself so seriously when you're younger and by the time you hit 30, <laughs> you're like, I can't do anything. I'm, I'm 26 now, so I guess that makes me an adult oh officially. God, you're so but... young. How old are you, Lauren? 30. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I've only just discovered what credit cards are and how good they are. Yeah, I've got a credit card. <laughs> She's so proud. <laughs> I've got a credit card that I pay off every month. Like an adult. That's like adult. a 39 year old adult. You are winning at adulting. <laughs> I, I believe I believe that you do pay that off every month. I do, I do. Oh, very good. I don't. <laughs> well, otherwise it's just that doesn't make any financial sense, Sam. I'm I know. Like, yeah, I'm I like, know. Sammy being schooled by a non-money reporter here. You should be ashamed of yourself. No, but I am also married to a uh, financial journalist, right. which has greatly helped my, um, who used to work at The Telegraph, doesn't anymore, so we don't talk about that anymore. But <laughs> he has greatly, like, schooled me in, like, paying a bill, budgeting, budgeting, which is like, m- a lot of people find that quite a normal thing to do, whereas I'm just like, let's spend all the money in two seconds. <laughs> Um, and he's like, no, Bryony, let's let's set up a savings account. I'm like, yeah, well, I have, like, why would we do that? He's like, because we have a child and a house and a mortgage. Responsibility. You know, there's a massive, great big hole in the kitchen ceiling. That, you know, that all the kind of that sensible yeah. stuff. I mean, financial reporters are good for something. Yeah, at least that's all he's good for. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, any kind of money money matters on your mind at the moment, Bryony? Well, I. Yeah, I am. It's really interesting because I have always been really terrible with money. I come with a, or I've not had money. <laughs> so I guess that's why that's, you know, but you can not have money and still be good with it. You know, right. mm. I think I've learned. I grew up in a fairly chaotic household where I, like, my, some of my like primary memories of growing up were like bailiffs knocking on the door and mm. stuff. Wow. It was really quite chaotic. And um, so I had no kind of modelling on financial responsibility really ever. And then I obviously telegraph listen, telegraph 
content users, on, you know, know that I'm a, I, I'm in recovery from alcoholism and addiction. And uh, as the more sober I've got, the more kind of sense I've had to learn all this kind of adulting mm. stuff at right. uh, quite a, like a ripe old age. And I do really sensible things now. Like I do budget, and I and I, you know, I don't just see something and buy it. And because I'm lucky to have like a little bit of disposable income now. And and also I've started doing things like this is what I did the other day. It's September, okay, and I did my tax return. You serious? And, yeah. Wow, that really puts. And me that in. was like <laughs> I'm I a felt, January thirtieth kind I, of girl. I'm like a February first, okay. <laughs> like usually I'm like oh, and I was like no, because it was starting to worry me. It was starting to worry me a bit, and I was like, well, I tell you what, just sit down, do it. And then you know what your liability is and yada, 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 yada. I mean, because I'm on staff, so I don't, you know what I mean? But it was, I was like, oh, I feel really good. It's a really grown up thing to have done, you know. I'm very so, impressed. That, yeah, thanks. You should really earn your place on the money podcast Thank now. You. <laughs> Thank yes. you so much. The test. It, we just, can now it, proceed. <laughs> <laughs> would you chuck me out? I, I otherwise, yeah. If you hadn't done the tax return, I don't know what we would have done. Okay, well, with um, today's one of our conundrums today, I'm going to take you back to your heady days of your 20s. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got a reader problem. My flatmate's boyfriend has all but moved in but refuses to pay rent. I'll just read the letter to you. Earlier this year, two friends and I moved in together and we were really excited about having a girls-only flat. About two months later, one of my flatmates started a new relationship and since then her boyfriend has effectively moved in. It went from him staying over for one or two nights a week to sleeping there every night. He often hangs out in the common areas, which changes the whole vibe of the flat. So my flatmate and I asked our friend whether her boyfriend could spend less time in the flat or at least whether he could contribute to some bills. However, she got upset. Should we ask her to move out? We don't want to lose our friend. Okay. Uh, can I just say something? Go for it. Like <laughs> everything about this is is wrong. Not from the poor girl who has a boyfriend, but the two people writing in and like like what what is the problem here? I don't think there's actually if you look at this in black and white, this is if you really drill down, this has nothing to do with money. Right. It has right. nothing to do with him like using the electricity by charging his phone in the quote unquote common areas. <laughs> you know, if he's okay, I presume, I assume he's sharing the bed with the mm -hmm. with, with his girlfriend room, I, think, you know, yeah. like, I doubt he, he has his own room yeah, well no or well, like if he was like walking in and climbing into bed with the two flatmates <laughs> then we'd have a problem but like what is this like this is not this is not about money this is about them being annoyed that she has disrupted the girly feeling of the flat by bringing in another guy mm. A, mm. a boyfriend and possibly you know perhaps there's a little bit of resentment that she has a boyfriend I don't know but I do think that actually I always have this thing where I'm like do you want to be happy or do you want to be right yeah mm. like that's what we got right. taught in rehab okay <laughs> which is like I remember coming up for like my first family Christmas my first Christmas of sobriety and the counsellor in rehab was like do you want to be happy or do you want to be right like smile and mm. wave like well you know because I'd be like it's the principle my mum and my dad are annoying and she's like yeah, people literally die on they all die over stupid principles mm. do you know what I mean yeah like my feeling on this and it's only my feeling so, you know, it, it, it's not, not necessarily right or wrong. It's just, is that I would like, I would just leave it. Like, if he's, if he's like eating your food, if he's, if he's, you know, then that's something to talk about separately, which is that we find it really annoying that he eats my cornflakes. Da, 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 da. Could he maybe just buy? But I don't really understand why you're asking him to pay rent. Like, mm. as long as the money for that room is coming in every month from your flatmate, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. She could have, do you know what I mean? And it's, it's not like she's, it's not like she's subletting within her room to six different people who are then using the common room. It's her boyfriend. She has a right as a human to form relationships and have relationships with those people and invite them back to her house. Of course. Her flat. On the, I mean, on the flip side, this is, this is going to make me seem really shallow now, but I'm going to go against what they said in rehab. But this happened, I was on the flip side of this at university, mm -hmm. so uh, in my second year, we, me and my housemates from first year, we found a house, there were, there were nine of us, so it was quite a big house, um, and over summer, um, one, of, one of the girls we were going to live with, um, her boyfriend started staying over a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and we were like, well, that's fine. None of us are there at the moment. Then when we moved back for, for the year to begin, it turned out that he had actually cancelled 
the tenancy agreement on the flat that he was living in and was just intending to live with us in in rent this house. Free. Um, well, I think yeah, they split the they split the one rent between the two of them. Um, I think he did contribute to bills. So what? I actually but what can't really remember. Is it, is it, but what, the heating, his... the heating being on, became a very okay, so big. That, but this is the thing: it's like it, if you're going to, ha- if you live with people, they're going to annoy you in some shape or form. That is life. Very true. Do you know what very I mean? True. <laughs> like they'll turn the thermostat up too high for your liking. They'll spend too long in the shower. You know, that's adult life. Deal with it. Do you mm. know what I mean? If you don't want to be annoyed by other people, don't live with them is my opinion on it. Now, I know that's financially often really tricky, Mm. but I always think that part of getting older is that you sort of start to, you know, like, uh, it's really interesting because I now only, I mean, I live with my husband, obviously, and my daughter, and we kind of flex to each other and he doesn't drive me mad on the whole and (laughs) I don't drive him mad on the whole and we we kind of know how each uh, the other person wants to live and, Mm. you know, and I've, but I've gone through all those years of being, of like fuming silently about the fact that someone's got a boyfriend I don't like who's in the, my my space. Do you know what I mean? But it's also your flatmate's space, mm. and she has every right to have a grown up <laughs> relationship. And if he's not like trashing the place, or you know, I, I just feel that kind of thing of he's sitting in the common areas. It's like and like I, you know what I mean? Like I practically moved in with my boyfriend, who is now my husband, and uh, I just. You know, I, don't, I think as long as the rent is being paid. Right. I think you're right. I mean, you say it's, she's annoyed about the principle of the thing. She yeah. thinks, you know, we agreed we were going to have this lovely little life, just girls, yeah. mm. girls' nights, wine and cheese, whatever. And now there's like a horrible man who's come and invaded our space. As you say, it's not a money issue, is it? Yeah. Like they agreed to split rent. They agreed to split rent three ways. And they are. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's slightly different if um, they're on completely different shift patterns, for example, and he's there at a time when they wouldn't be using up resources and if bills are being pushed higher. But again, that's the kind of thing, just bring it up and say, mm. we really feel feel like we're all paying a lot more money for your boyfriend to be here and he's very welcome to be here mm. but could he just contribute a little bit yeah so my my advice to them would be to kind of like sit back kind of ask themselves you know is this is this really about money i don't i really don't think it, it i mean mm. I, I you know i may be wrong but i think it's 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 something else and yeah, do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? You know what I mean? <laughs> Smile and wet. Like, you, it's like drinking It's like drinking poison and hoping the other person, you know, like festering over something like yeah. this. And it isn't really that big a deal. And the longer you fester, it just kind of builds up into this huge thing, yeah, doesn't and it? And it's difficult living with people. It is oh, difficult. It's the worst. But this is all part of it. And, you know, I, I, if, she, if she had suddenly gone, well, there's someone, you know, but it's not about money, this. It's about mm. something completely different. Also, you, you'd think that all of these girls eventually would presumably want to have a partner in their life. Yeah. And how would they want to be treated if they suddenly exactly. be, started be seeing nice, somebody? You'd kind. want your boyfriend to come over, wouldn't you? Be reasonable. You? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's good practice. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, the read, a lot of the readers, so this this column, like all our Moral Money columns, has already gone on the Telegraph website, um, and the readers have had their say, in, what their, did they say in their numbers. Well, I have to say, most of them don't agree with you on this oh, one. Well, they, uh, that's quite, that's, it, that happens almost all the time. <laughs> Telegraph readers, most of the people who read my column in the Telegraph don't agree with me. And that's what they love about me. <laughs> that, that is what makes it such a good column. That's why they keep coming back. Um, well, lots of them were saying freeloader was a word that was used a lot about this about this man coming over. And I mean, we presume he has he's paying his own rent on a flat somewhere. But if he's staying there every night, this is uh, that's a word that came up a lot. Is there a principle there, do you think, that... He should be paying his way in some way. Well, but like what? Like I don't know. Like I just think no. I just think like get over it. Like I've got there are much bigger things to be worrying about. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and I think that this is one of those. It's a bit petty. Mm-hmm. It's a bit petty to be honest. You you can't control other people. You can't control what happens in their lives. You can't really control what happens in your own life. Mm. But you can control your reaction to it. You know. And if he's an asshole and not a nice person then that's a different that's right. a different matter and that, that i suspect maybe that's slightly what's going on i don't know but you know it's it's not about the money like make it clear about what it like nail it down like if they don't like him then say that mm. and then maybe just suggest that she moves out like do you know what i mean like i always think like live yeah. in the solution not the problem we should i want to go to rehab we should do any person who writes in with a moral money question 
has to go to money rehab. Well, will, <gasps> Bryony will teach them her I wisdom. Just think, I just think life is much better if you live in the solution, not the problem. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how are we going to stop this annoying us? Because I don't want to be annoyed. I don't want to spend yeah. waste any of my time. Especially in your home environment. You don't want to go yeah, home every day and be yeah. annoyed I by little it. things. I get it. I totally get it. But like, nail down, at least be honest with yourself about what the problem is. And right. I don't think this is money. Well, I don't think there's anything that we're going to be able to say that will convince you, no. Brony. You're, you're decided on that one. I, I do sound unsympathetic. But <laughs> I, 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 I thought, so, yeah, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, podcast listeners. My name's Danny Boyle, and I'm the Telegraph's Commuter Editions Editor, which means it's my job to provide you with great journalism that makes your journey to and from work as enjoyable as possible. I can't prevent train delays or guarantee you won't get caught in the rain, but I can make sure you're up to date with the best of The Telegraph every morning and evening. And I just wanted to let you know about one of the ways you can get all that in audio form. All you need to do is join my WhatsApp group. Every weekday, my colleague Chris Price and I bring you short audio briefings directly to your smartphone at eight in the morning and half past five in the afternoon. And the best bit is completely free to sign up and easy. Just click on the link in the show notes for this episode. I look forward to having you as a group member soon. Well, our second uh, conundrum, I hope that you will have lots of interesting things to say about this one as well. Uh, (laughs) This one is about parents and, more importantly, grandparents. There's nothing more important than parents. (laughs) I just want to say. <laughs> what about grandparents? <laughs> well, I mean, as a parent myself, I think I'm the most important thing in my child's life. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. But well, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll read what was sent in by uh, our listener. Like most of our friends with children, we rely heavily on our own parents. Our children's grandparents on both sides help us pay nursery fees as well as help ferry the kids about when we need to get to work. The problem is that over time, the grandparents have started to impose their own views on how we raise the children. For instance, they've started to say we should move nearer to where they live, arguing it would be more convenient for them, given how much they help out, and because the schools are better. We disagree with this and several other things, but when I argue my case, I get shot down. It seems that they believe they have a say in how our children are raised simply because they help us financially. We can't really afford to turn down their help, but equally, we don't want to be enthralled to their whims. What's your initial reaction okay, to that? My initial reaction to this is that I don't think these are whims. <laughs> Again, it's not very sympathetic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spotting a trend you here, Bryony. I feel like it, okay, let's think about this. Like, you know, grandparents let's not let's not beat around the bush here. Grandparents are, you know, people that are grandparents are probably gonna be old, you know, and not have as much as energy mm. as 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 you do, Sam, because you're only twenty six. <laughs> but like what <laughs> what I what I what I feel is is that I think you do have to be sympathetic to the fact that they perhaps I don't know how far away the grandparents mm, live, mm. but actually it is like if you are going to use us as childcare, then you also have to fact like I have to factor in considerations of the person I employ as childcare. Mm, do you know right. what I mean? Like you know, and I, and I feel like just because they're family, it doesn't mean that you kind of you just kind of throw that to the right. They 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 do it anyway because they love. Yeah, and I, and I so kind of feel kind of like uh, I feel like you know, it's it's hard. You know, it is expensive having kids, but you know, I think it should also for a start. I always think it's really important in life to think about what you do have and not what you don't have. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or, or what you wish that you had. So you wish you had a perfect set of grandparents mm. who just gave you money and came and did and did and did childcare for you without without trying to impose on you in any way. Well yeah, sure, we'd all like that, wouldn't we? That would be amazing. But that's not real life. And mm. perhaps be grateful that they're willing to help you out financially because let me tell you, let me tell you, <laughs> there are not that many people who actually get they don't like She's the person who I say she, he, whoever wrote the letter says like many of our friends. And that's true. But there are a lot of people out there in situations where they don't have Mm. any support from grandparents. Do you know what I mean? Either because the grandparents don't have any money, but also because the grandparents don't care Mm. or they're they're not interested and they don't offer any support. And I think that I think that a little bit of gratitude might go further. And if, you know, perhaps 
take into consideration the fact that I don't know how far, you know, without them saying how far away they're having to travel each day. Mm, do you know what mm. I mean? Obviously, moving house is not cheap. Do you know what I mean? So it's not <laughs> sure. a big thing. But I, I don't know what else they, it, you know, it, when she said, and lots of, you know, other things that they're trying to impose on us. Like, I don't know what it is. And I think, again, it's one of those things where hell is other people. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But you have to accommodate them and you can't, you know, you're not, you don't have a God given right to be handed however many thousand pounds worth of nursery fees for your mm, child. Mm. Some of the advice they give as well may it's well helpful. be good and, and helpful know, advice. And they may know what they've done it before, about. haven't they? Yeah, yeah they've, they've done it before. They they've successfully raised raised, well, you could ask how successfully, given <laughs> their children are <laughs> yeah. then asking this. I mean, yeah. but I think you're right that asking your, the grandparent asking their children to move house is quite an extreme and very expensive yeah. and sort of time consuming, stressful example. But let's say they're saying, um, we will pay for school fees, but only if they go to this kind of school or um, we'll contribute to this, but only if it's done this way. I'm, I'm happy to give you a little money every month, but we don't want them eating any chips. Whatever it is, yeah. it's sort of smaller things like that. Well, Where yeah, do you, I, how do you how do you draw that line? I think that if you're, as a, if I, I think if you're a grandparent and you're going to pay, I mean, I don't know, I don't, my child doesn't go to a fee paying school. So I think that, well, again, I think if you're the grandparents and you're willing to lend them the money, you have to accept that they will spend it. Mm. And, and, and I and I also think that, I mean, that's what I say. I also have this kind of thing that if someone's asking to borrow money off you, my, in my head, I'm like, don't expect to see it back again. Like, right. do you yeah. know what I mean? And don't then feel you have a moral kind of right to, to, to kind tell of tell them. them what to do. Yeah. Either say, no, I'm not giving you the money or give them the money. But don't, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not... It can't come with sort of It can't come with caveats, do you know what yeah. I mean? Mm, like, mm. so I either say, no, I'm not paying for school fees, send your kid to the local primary school. Um, like, lots of, yeah. hundreds of thousands of people do every year, again, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I think, so there's, you know, there's stuff on both sides. Well, as one reader, Kevin Lister, points out, if you can't feed them, don't breed them. <laughs> well, but, says, that's, but that's not helpful because right. that's mm. again that's living in the pro- like they have bred them right. so yes, what right. does Kevin Lister does Kevin Lister want them to like push the babe the children back into the mother's <laughs> womb and like or give them away do you know what I mean like that's not helpful at all no. <laughs> sure not you're right Kevin but, like, if you're but also no, but I do think kids happen you know and you and they're, and they're, and they're not cheap do you know what I mean? But they are wonderful. Mm. And I don't think that child rearing has to be this kind of like torturous, awful. I've come to the conclusion that I, I mean, I'm very lucky because I have a job that means I can write from home in my pants or whatever. And and I can pick my daughter up from school. And um, I don't actually need to rely. My mum comes like every other week and because she wants to come and see the child. Mm. But my mum doesn't kind of like impose any like if anything my mum comes and then she like brings us your chocolate and I'm like mum don't do that don't <laughs> this is normal yeah. life you know again hell as other people but I think a bit of gratitude on the part of these parents would not go amiss mm. like it's hard life is hard but you know you're not up a chimney but perhaps also so I, th- I feel like we're a little more torn on this one because we do think that perhaps you shouldn't give money with lots of conditions you should understand that they'll spend it as they spend it yeah but so, well, I think there's that as well but I think this is the pro- this is the kind of intergenerational problem isn't it mm. um, the conditions that the grandparents seem to be trying to suggest are could you live a bit closer because the schools are better and it would make it, th- if this is the arrangement for the mm. next 15 years it would make life much easier for us because we ain't getting any younger do you know what I mean mm-hmm. and I don't think that's that unreasonable I mean it is extreme as you say mm. but it's it, it's also kind of like that one feels practical to me at least I did say mm. earlier that it's extreme but saying hi darling here's some money but it has to be spent this way yeah. is kind of but a have bit they said petty that? I didn't I didn't like I didn't I didn't hear I that don't know but you know they, they do <laughs> they suggest that they're getting money from the grandparents and they're being told how to spend it yeah but as you say if the grandparents asking their children to think practically to, yeah to think practically and to like shape their lifestyle differently so that they can better help them yeah. is different isn't it it's not saying yeah. here's money but I only want it spent it this way and I only want I only want them to go to uh, you know a, a Catholic whatever right. you know fee paying school and you can have this money but I don't want my child to go to you know like I think that that all of that stuff is it's you know none of your none of their uh, business 
Do we feel, I mean, away from this specific issue, I, I wonder if this is something that's happening more and more with kind of the bank of mum and dad the lines that we are hear blurred, so much aren't about. They? The, boundaries are blo- the boundaries are not very clear. Mm. Um, a, lo- a, lot of, a lot of people my age are getting money from parents or grandparents, and it is specifically to put on a house deposit. Yeah, we actually, I mean, we reported last week that the number of cases of parents taking their kids to court over oh these yes. kinds of monies has tripled in the last what? year. Kind yeah. of money that was maybe given as um, a gift and then was it a loan? So it, it's so difficult when it comes to parents and children because, we, you know, I think children are so used to receiving money from their parents. It doesn't even need to be a huge amount from a deposit, mm. does it? Mm. Your whole life. But also, I think there's this sort of like intergenerational war where, you know, us younger people, and I am planting myself as a young person, <laughs> Sam. We'll, we'll allow you. Even we'll though I'm like 15 years older than you. But like, no, no, I'm not quite that. I'm 39. So. But like, we, I think there's a lot of resentment between the generations. Mm, they um, had it better. They had it better. They had it easier. Mm. They didn't have, you know, loans and you know, yada yada. But I think that you've got to, you've got to look at, you've got, you know, again, the key to all this is to accept it as it is. Like, there's no point trying to, you know, there's no point getting resentful that things aren't the way you'd like them to be. Mm. They're just not. So, like, again, do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? <laughs> do you want your life to be easy or do you want to make it hard? You know? I think we've got a title for the episode. <laughs> yeah. I, just and think, I, just I think, want it tattooed. I just think that sometimes a bit of grace and a bit of gratitude and going, I'm really, you know, and actually just changing the attitude might even, you might see that the grandparents soften and don't mm. come. So if you go, Mum, mm. Dad, thank you so much for coming. I, I, I'm so grateful that you've made this journey and you've come and you've lent me the money. You might see that they're like, they don't need, they don't have any right, caveats. Yeah. It doesn't come with any caveats. Suddenly they're they really like happy to, to just... A bit more like, appreciated. They, they might want to be appreciated, yeah. Mm. Just think about it and put yourself in their shoes. Bryony, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Do you have a moral money problem of your own? Or you just want to tell us something about the show? You can email us at moralmoney at telegraph.co.uk or you can even leave us a voicemail on 07867 162 170. We'll also put that number in the show notes. The producer of this podcast was Theodora Leludis. If you like what you've heard, do subscribe and leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you to Mike Stoner1, Pan1993 and Discerning123 for your kind reviews last week. And if you're enjoying the podcast, shout about it. Tell your friends. Tweet up a storm. Just tell someone you know. (laughs) And be sure to come back next week when we'll be talking to Harry DeKettville about whether you can ask fellow parents to pay up if their child ruined your son's expensive trainers. He'll also be reflecting on his own time as a waiter as we ask him about the moral implications of not leaving a tip. See you then.